Okay, today I want to take a minute and talk about my new sleeping pad. That is the Thermarest Uberlite. I uh, picked this thing up a couple of weeks ago and I just went on a recent trip with my brother in Uwari National Forest, um, which I did make a trip video for. I'll throw that right up here if you want to check that out. Um, it was a great trip. We had some really challenging conditions. It's definitely raining now. So, um, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it had rain pretty much the entire time. Some heavy rain, some light rain. Temps anywhere from uh, the mid 30s. Gotta warm my hands up for a second. Oh, it's cold. It's maybe a little below the mid 30s, up into the low 40s. Um, so it was a it was a good test run for the pad. Um, I did sleep on it a couple of nights, and so. What I want to do today is just kind of dive into the specs. I'm going to tell you what I think of the pad, and then I'm going to compare it to some other pads that are of similar weight and R value and throw some other options at you. Uh, for this review, I will be reviewing the regular size pad. So that is a 20 inch wide pad. It's 72 inches long and it's two and a half inches thick. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the weight of the Uber Light. Obviously, that's the reason people are so excited about it because it is uber light for a full length sleeping pad. The uber light specs out at 8.8 .8 ounces according to the Thermarest website. As I would carry it on trail, so this is after some use, so maybe it's got a little dust and dirt on it. I usually just use a hair tie up or I might just shove it in my pack just without anything to keep it rolled up. So this is no stuff sack. Then uh, a little bit of additional weight from the seam sealer to keep this thing from sliding around inside my shelter. So this is how I would carry it. My scale, funny as it is, just like this without the stuff sack, it comes in at 8.8 .8 ounces. So I'm gonna call that the actual uh, real world trail weight. The R value for the pad is a two. Uh, basically just keep things simple. The R value is gonna tell you how warm the pad is going to sleep. It basically tells you how much uh, heat it's going to reflect. So the higher the R value or the number, then the warmer the pad will sleep. The Uberlite is a considerably lower R value um, than the x Light. That's definitely something to take into account. I think um, I would probably take the Uberlite down into the upper teens. That would probably be the comfort range for me. Another concern that people had with the x Light pads is the noise. Sound comes from the uh, reflective or warm layer that they put inside the pad. Now the Uberlite does not have that layer, which is why it has a lower R value, but it also at the same time is, it's not loud at all. And it's much quieter too. It doesn't, it doesn't have the Dorito bag sound really. It's, and this is brand new, like the other ones lose the sound somewhat after you sleep on them for a while, or mine did, but this one's pretty quiet right out of the gate. Move it for you there, you can hear it. Um, certainly nothing that would ever keep me from sleeping, and I don't believe that it would ever bother anyone else sleeping close to me. So that's a plus. Okay, as far as comfort goes, um, being that I used the Neo Air X Lite Short. Now I've been able to go to a regular pad. I think there's there's a vast increase in comfort. Not because uh, the pad itself is more comfortable. I think if you had a, a regular size, a full length X Lite and a full length Uber Lite, I think they would probably sleep about the same as far as comfort goes. However, because I was using a short version to keep my weight uh, to keep my weight down. Now I'm able to sleep on a full length pad, which in my opinion is a lot more comfortable. Slept on that last night. It is just as comfortable as the other guys, but it is uber light. Another thing that people are always talking about is how long does it take to blow up the pad? Well, I'm gonna tell you it takes a while. It's probably a good 20 breaths to blow up the uber light. It's, you know, it's not that big a deal. What I like to do is I'll start blowing it up and I'll basically chop it into small goals. I know it sounds silly, but I'll just, I'll go five breaths, take a pause, go five breaths, take a pause. And then that just kind of makes it easier for me. 
feel and durability of this pad. So when I first opened up the box and I took this pad out, my first impression of it was it's a trash bag. I mean, it, honestly, it felt like I was pulling out a very thin black contractor bag. That was my first impression. But after sleeping on it a couple of nights and being around it a little while, I obviously it's an ultralight pad. With any ultralight gear, you need to take a little bit better care. You need to be a little bit more careful with those items. But honestly, in my opinion, I'm not terribly worried about the pad and its durability. Now, I would never put this down on sharp rocks. Um, I wouldn't pull it out and sit around camp. I mean, I'm gonna, this is gonna be on a sheet of polycryo or it's gonna be on a bathtub floor inside of a shelter. Um, I would never put it down straight on the ground. So yeah, be a little bit more careful with it, but I feel like it's gonna be pretty durable. This uh, fabric feels really slick to me. I found that the pad has a tendency to slide and slip around on the floor of my shelter. So what I did and what I do with all of my sleeping pads, and I, I just add, you can probably see, I add little dabs of seam sealer to the bottom of the pad. And all that does is when, when the pad tries to slide around, it grips and it definitely helps with moving around inside of your shelter or whatever surface it is that you're sleeping on. Okay, now I'm gonna deflate this thing and uh, we're gonna pack it down and we're gonna see exactly how small it gets. Got it rolled up. I myself do not use a stuff sack. Actually, I try not to use stuff sacks for most of the items that I carry. It's just a way to save additional weight. And honestly, um, I'd probably just stuff this in my pack, shove it down inside of the trash compactor bag with my quilt. But I am going to put it inside of the stuff sack just to show the actual size. I know a lot of people want to see the size as it comes out of the box, but I just wanted to show it kind of more in a, I guess, a, a real world or trail world uh, size. Obviously you could probably get a little tighter, um, a little smaller if you really spend a lot of time on it. I myself am not going to do that and I don't know anybody else that would either. This bag is plenty big. It's easy to get back in there. Right inside, no problem. This thing is incredibly small. I was trying to think of something that I could compare it to. I came up with two items. This is a small Gatorade bottle. The Gatorade bottle, that is the Uberlite. And that is actually, you could probably, you could probably get it even smaller if you really squeezed on it. That's the size, the height. Just for fun, I thought I would compare it to Pop-Tart. And not so much because it's just a great way to compare the size, then I get to eat the Pop-Tart. And that's kind of fun. All right, now let's talk about some other options that have similar weights and R values to the Uberlite. Um, this is a pad that's very popular in the backpacking community, especially for PCT hikers, um, being that you have to sleep in the desert and there are a lot of things that will pop an inflatable pad. This is uh, a Z-Lite Soul. Um, these are great pads. I, I find them to be adequate as far as comfort goes. They're fairly warm. And um, with a torso length, when you cut them down, they do, I mean, they don't pack small, but definitely manageable. And another great thing is they make, a, you know, a good seat for sitting around camp. So this is another option that's similar in weight. These basically, each section is an ounce. So it's pretty easy to figure out the weight. Um, my torso length pad, this guy here, uh, I used nine sections. So for the Z-Lite, you're looking at an R value of uh, 2.6 and uh, 9 ounces. And this pad will run you about $45, um, so it's a very affordable option. Alright, so I think the, uh, the Uberlite is a great pad. It's definitely going to be my go-to pad for any three-season use. I think as far as comparing it to the the X-Lite that has been such a go-to pad for backpackers, um, they're pretty close as far as price. 
you are a cold sleeper, it's worth it for you to carry that extra weight and, uh, and make sure that you're warm and you've got that increased R value. However, if you are a warm or hot sleeper or you're in the middle of the road like me, I think it's definitely better to go with the Uberlite. You're gonna save yourself some weight. You're gonna have a pad that packs incredibly small and you're still gonna have the comfort. So overall, I'm really excited about having the Uberlite. Um, hope I helped you guys out with this video. I hope I gave you some other options for other pads and maybe a way to save you some money. If you liked the video, hit the like button down below. As always, send me some suggestions, any topics that you might have that you want me to cover. Just throw that down in the comments. Let me know how I'm doing on these videos. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.